The San Juan FIR is truly unique. It is a peninsula of the national airspace system, partially surrounded by foreign air navigation service providers and connects with NAS facilities, Miami Center to the Northwest and New York Oceanic to the North and Northeast. It is strategically located to be the precipice, the impetus behind many airspace and airway projects. You'll notice as we jump into more videos, and this one in particular, how many airways start in the San Juan FIR and transcend the entire East Coast or partially through the Midwest of the United States. So it's very, very interesting. And this is why we have so many videos on drawing the map because there are so many different classifications of airways because there's domestic airspace, oceanic airspace, international airspace. So there's a whole bunch of airways with a whole plethora of names. So welcome back to video two. If you followed in succession, this is aimed to be the second video. However, any video can be watched in any particular order. It doesn't really follow logic other than this video having probably the most airways. It's called the Lovely Limas. And as you'll see, just about every airway, well, every airway starts with an L. Lima followed by three numbers. Very exciting. We are moving onwards to the PVM map victory. There you go. By doing the L's, right? So take this L, even though you'll be a winner in my book, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to draw, follow along, mileages, fixes, nav aids. It's going to be a blast. Steve here, welcome back. Let's get to that bulleted list and so on and so forth to the map. See you there. All right, so here we are. No need for a bulleted list today. We are going to jump right to the first airway in question. We will be going in numerical order. Towards the end, we kind of get a little khaki wombus. We have a couple airways at the end that are not in sequential order, but for the first dozen or so, we are in fact in a semblance of order. Lima 221 is a relatively new airway up in the upper left hand corner you will see that that's where the name's at you see how we are met yet again with the boundary the plan view of the san juan fir and this airway in particular you're going to fixate your eyes to the southwest corner or the southwest boundary here 68 degrees is this area of longitude and let's get started at a fix called Gabad is the first fix that lies outside San Juan Center's airspace. It goes through Santa Domingo and onwards to Curacao. And it goes to a boundary fix called Sato, Sierra Alpha Tango Oscar Echo. Sato. 67 miles later, you are met with the fix Tayog. And from Tayog, 28 miles to a fix called Joshi. Joshi being a common arrival fix makes up an arrival gate into the San Juan terminal area. Lima 221 can be used bi-directionally, but more often than not, it facilitates traffic arriving from Central America to the San Juan terminal area without having to fly all the way north to Maya, as we covered in the previous video with the colored ATS routes. So, Gabad, Sato, 67 miles to Tayog, right? 28 miles to Joshi and the airway terminates. Lima 221. Good job, let's go on to the next. All right, moving in order, Lima 325, a relatively new airway that replaced some of the colored ATS routes. It was all planned to phase out some of the older navade based airways. So fixate your eyes on this southwest corner here at the Curacao San Juan boundary. And we will start with the fix Scapa. From Scapa goes to Dakes. And now, as you see, we are inside of that domestic circle. 78 miles between those two points. Then we go to a fix called Gabby, Gulf Alpha Bravo Yankee Yankee. So two Ys, not two Bs, but two Ys. 42 miles between Dakes and Gabby and 35 miles from Gabby to Joshi. Yet again, as you can probably deduce, 
an airway that facilitates traffic to the San Juan terminal area arriving from the AVC islands, Curacao, Bonaire, Aruba, and more or less any Colombian-based traffic landing San Juan or trying just to fly near the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and the British Virgin Islands. And oftentimes aircraft will use SCAPA as a way to avoid Venezuelan airspace to the east of SCAPA. So a route that is very useful in facilitating San Juan arrival traffic no fix exists outside or inside of Curacao's airspace, if that makes sense. And it simply ends at Joshi. Very good. Lima 325, Scapa, 78 miles to Dakes, 42 to Gabby, 35 to Joshi, and it terminates. Lima 325, everybody. Lima 327 is a great airway, and luckily we are looking at a few of of these airways that are going to emit from the point SCAPA. So Lima 327, and it does in fact start at SCAPA as denoted by that yellow line. Not a lot of intermediate fixes between SCAPA and the fix SALT. And as you saw there, 328 miles is the distance between SCAPA and SALT, a fairly long distance. SALT being this fix here, shadowed with a um, RNAV waypoint and obviously the darker stenciled in version as well. And from salt, it makes a little bit of a dog leg left turn and there's 92 miles to a fix called Opal. And there it terminates. There is no continuance of this airway past Opal. So starting at Scapa, 328 miles to a fix called Salt. Sierra Alpha Uniform Lima Tango, 92 miles to Opal. And Opal, we will be dealing with Opal uh, for a couple more airways. So you'll get pretty darn familiar with this fix. And it does not continue outside of San Juan's airspace in either direction. Doesn't go into New York Oceanic airspace, and it does not go southwest bound into Curacao's airspace. Lima 327, Opal, 92 miles to Salt, 320 miles to Scapa, where it terminates. Very good, let's keep up the good vibes. So, Lima 329 we are faced with. So we will not be looking towards the SCAP area. We will get back to that point later on. Lima 329 is a great airway. This one does in fact extend into the Piarco flight information region. So Piarco Center took that airway and ran with it and extended it beyond the San Juan boundary. And it's very exciting. It's a great airway to facilitate traffic going towards New York Oceanics airspace, oftentimes bound for terminals along the East Coast, most notably the Washington DC area and all points north of that. Enough explaining there. It will emit from a RNAV waypoint. You see a faint diamond right there. It's called Sorrel. Sorrel goes northwest to Zapata, Zulu Papa Alpha Tango Alpha. It goes to the St. Martin VOR, and there's 38 miles between Zapata and the St. Martin VOR. It then goes to Salt, which we just talked about, as you see still written in gold from the Lima 327. 154 miles lies between the St. Martin VOR DME and SALT. And then from SALT to a fix called Kika, which you will also get very familiar with. And there's 115 miles that unites SALT and Kika. So 115 miles to Kika from SALT. In reverse order, Kika, 115 miles to SALT. 154 miles to the Princess Juliana or St. Martin VOR, 38 miles to Zapata, and just know that the Zapata, it extends into Piarco Center's airspace to Sorrel. It does not, Lima 325 does not extend past Kika into New York Center's airspace at the time of this video's publication. So Sorrel, Zapata, 38 miles to Juliana, 154 miles to Salt, 115 miles to Kika, and there you have Lima 329. Wonderful. Let's keep moving.
All right, so we stumble upon Lima 335, and we are back in the SCAP area, so take a look over there. First things first, to know that we have a nice charcoal color arrow extending southwest bound. That is to tell you, hey, there is a fix called Gadir, Gulf Alpha Delta India Romeo, which does in fact extend southwest bound into the Curacao flight information region. It is just not depicted. It would be off screen, but just gee whiz information that this area does go rather far all the way southwest bound through Curacao, right over those islands, and then now into the tip of South America. So it goes through Colombia and southwest bound um, to well, the middle of uh, the top of South America, if you will, not quite Central America. So Gadir is somewhere down to the southwest, and then you have Scapa and a very long uninterrupted fix-wise route segment to Trinky, a fix you'll get very familiar with as a D2 controller because there's a lot of traffic landing St. Martin that arrives over Trinky. That segment is 328 miles in length and it goes to a fix called O-Bike. Yet again, these boundary fixes with respect to New York Oceanic Airspace you'll get used to because as dictated by our LOAs, we will be giving boundary time level and mock numbers to the New York Center controller, so you'll get very familiar with all of the boundary fixes that make up the common boundary between San Juan and New York. Oh, bike, there it is, and there's 98 miles that lie between them. Lima 335 does not extend northeast into New York Center's airspace. As we discussed, it does in fact start somewhere in South America. The next fix prior to Scapa is Gadir. Scapa, 328 miles to Trinky, 98 miles to Obike where it terminates. In reverse order, Obike, 98 miles to Trinky, 328 to Scapa, then onwards to Gadir. And that makes up Lima 335. Very good. One of the more shorter airways in San Juan Center's airspace is Lima 337. It's basically a, an unglorified point out. If you were looking at the southwest corner of our airspace, right around Gabad, where we started Lima 221, you'll see a fix slightly north of there, and it'll be T-Lig, written in blue. T-Lig is the first fix that lies outside of San Juan Center's airspace. It is in Santa Domingo's airspace. It goes to a boundary fix called Nagon, November, Echo, Golf, Oscar, November, to a fix called Cabeza. Cabeza was not always there. It was placed there so you can visualize and use flight progress trips for non-radar separation because you'll see that there are other airways other than the ones that are currently depicted. You currently show three there, but there's going to be at least one more. So it's a great position for a traffic search because we still use flight progress trips here. Cabeza time will help you visualize where traffic will be with respect to traffic that is moving northeast bound and northbound from Scapa. So Cabeza, 39 miles lie between Nagon and Cabeza, Kilo Bravo Echo Zulu Alpha, and then to a boundary fix called Armour. And there's 63 miles from Cabeza to Armour. Alpha Romeo Mike Uniform Romeo, and then the first fix that lies outside of the San Juan FIR inside of the Venezuelan airspace, Mike Atia Center's airspace, is a fix called Ilmet. Fun fact, Lima 337 actually extends well past Ilmet, and it goes southeast bound all the way to Papa Oscar Sierra, or the Port of Spain VOR, which is on the island of Trinidad. And that's where actually Piarco is located, the facility, and it's a relatively large island where there's a lot of traffic. So you'll get a lot of traffic traversing the South Florida area that may use Lima 337 to not only get to Piarco, but also as a way to get to Brazil and other terminal areas deep within South America. So Lima 337, T-Lig, Nagon, 39 miles, Cabeza, 63 miles, Armour, Ilmet, Ilmet, Armour, 63 miles to Cabeza, 39 miles to Nagon, 
and onwards to T-Lig Northwest bound. Lima 337, folks. And here we are with Lima 349, the next airway in succession. This airway, if you want to think about it, is the pseudo replacement of Green 633. Now, if you watched the ATS colored airway video before this, you would have noticed that Green 633 has a lot of kinks and bends and follows navigational aids and DME based airway fixes. It's the way the airway is viable and it's how it's able to be navigated. This is kind of a shortcut for traffic wanting to transcend the San Juan FIR east-west and west-east. So if you look, it's going to start at a fix called Ilara. We're going to make our way from west to east. Ilara is that nice little triangle that you see there. From Ilara goes to Sato, which we previously identified as a boundary fix with Lima 221, to a fix called Gesso. Gesso is a pretty interesting junction point for not only Lima Airways, but you'll see when we cover the Metroplex or the Yankee routes, there are some airways that emit and terminate at Gesso. And Gesso is almost stark middle of the San Juan FIR. And from Gesso and Sato, between those two fixes, 128 miles is in between. So Sato, 120 miles to Gesso. And from Gesso to a new boundary fix, or maybe not so new if you watched a previous video, to Gabar, Golf Alpha Bravo Alpha Romeo. And there's 160 miles that extend between Gesso, Golf Echo Sierra Sierra Oscar, and Gabar. Lima 349 does not go any further into the PRCO FIR. However, you may see Tango 349, and it might cause a little bit of confusion. PRCO named it with a T instead of an L, and it does exist inside PRCO Center's airspace. Maybe that was by design. Very useful airway for traffic, more often than not at altitude, overflying, the leeward and windward islands arriving from some of those outward island chains at altitude, making their way westbound to Santo Domingo, Haiti, possibly Cuba, possibly the Grand Cayman Islands, and then basically Central America. So a very useful airway at that. So Gabor, 160 miles, guess so, 128 miles to Sato, and then inside of Santa Domingo's airspace is Ilara. Lima 349, folks, let's keep up the good work. I have to be honest, Lima 452 is probably my most favorite airway that exists in San Juan Center's airspace. Why is it so interesting? Because of its vast and very extensive nature. Lima 452 actually starts at a point in Brazil Bravo Sierra India, Brasilia, Brazil, or Sierra Bravo, Bravo Romeo. That's the name of the airport, or that's the identifier for the airport. And it goes all the way to a fix called Oxana, which is in uh, just off the coast of the United States. And it is amazing how long this airway actually is and how you can use it to get to so many different areas. It's really a jack of all trades. If you want to get to Canada, you can take Lima 452. You want to get to the Carolinas, you can take Lima 452. And as I just mentioned, if you need to get to South America, you can use Lima 452. An awesome airway. So in the upper right hand corner, as you see Lima 452, we are going to start at the Southern area. So have your eyes there. Nice little off brown color there, or excuse me, purple color to It Love. It Love is the first fix that lies outside of San Juan Center's airspace. It is pretty far southeast into Piarca Center's airspace, so no chance that it was going to be able to be depicted on the map. Anada, I think this is the first time we've introduced Anada as a boundary fix. You'll be using this fix a lot. Very popular fix for traffic southeast bound going to. South America from the United States East Coast. Anada, 85 miles later, you get a fix called Raffi, Romeo Alpha Foxtrot Echo Echo, so two E's in Raffi. From Raffi, 
you're going to have a fix called ET. So a slight touch of alliteration there for you. Echo, tango, echo, echo, echo. So ET, triple E, if that helps you remember it. 36 miles lie between those two RNAV waypoints. And then it extends pretty darn far uninterrupted by any fix or nav aid to Barinkin, Vortac. You may be familiar with it from our last video. 148 miles lie between those two fixes. It makes a slight dogleg turn to avoid Santa Domingo's airspace at that elbow of our two FIRs. 50 miles to a fix called Munoz. And from Munoz, it goes to the fixed hair bag, and 83 miles lie between them. It extends well past hair bag and mirrors Red 763. Technically, Lima 452 and Red 763 are very much the same from Barinkin all the way to the fix Mackey. So Mackey, hair bag, 83 miles to Munoz, 50 miles to Barinkin, 148 miles to ET, 36 miles to Raffi, 85 miles to Anata, then southeast bound to Itlove. A little bit of gee whiz information. For a while, Lima 452 was aligned after Mackey to totally be um, paired with Red 763 to the Grand Turk VOR, but it got realigned, and you'll see when we cover the Yankee Airways why it's so important that it got realigned with the fix Haggett, which is really close to the Grand Turk VOR, but is in fact an RNAV waypoint. And like I said, Haggett will be a very popular junction point for most of the Yankee or Metroplex routes, and we will be covering that in a subsequent video. So, Mackey, Hairbag, 83 miles, Munoz, 50, Barinkin, 148 to ET, 36, Raffi, 85, Anata, Southeast to Love, Lima 452, a very useful airway. Lima 454, a very exciting airway. Yet again, something that has been manipulated and adjusted to suit our needs here at San Juan. Most recently, it has been realigned with a popular Metroplex boundary fix, which we'll discuss when we actually cover this airway. So if you want to look around Sorrel, it is nice because this is a common junction point, not only for Lima 329, but as you'll see, Lima 454 is also used by Piarca Center, and Lima 454 does go southeast bound pretty darn far to South America. So yet again, another airway finding its utility well beyond the national airspace system in the United States. Lima 454 is very popular for aircraft going to the New York terminal area. It is a very popular airway for people going to Kennedy, Boston, Philadelphia. So it's Pretty darn useful. Throw Newark in there as well. So without further ado, let's stop talking. Let's get tracing in this kind of off gold mustard-like color from Sorrel to a fix called Hillary, which you may be familiar with as we covered it uh, last video with Amber 555 from Hillary. It goes to a point called Liu. I know the L is not so detailed, but Lima, Echo, Echo, Oscar, Oscar. So L, double E, double O. 113 miles lie between Leo and Hillary. Leo to a fix called Gote, Golf Oscar Tango Alpha Yankee, G O T A Y. There is 69 miles lie between Leo and Gote. And from Gote, it goes to a fix called Panmo. We'll talk about Panmo a few more times in this presentation as it is a popular junction point. And there's 72 miles lie between Gote and Panmo. From Panmo, it extends northwest bound quite in interrupted to a fix called Don Ku. Don Ku is going to be a very popular exit fix leaving the San Juan FIR with Lima 454 and also plenty of Metroplex routes. So stay tuned. There's a lot of fun to be had with Don Ku. 
And then it kind of makes a dog leg, oh, sorry, 139 miles lie between Panmo and Dongku. And then pretty much it makes a dog leg turn almost true northbound to a fix called Kendall. And you'll be familiar not only with Kendall, but probably the fix that extends way beyond it. Kendall, there's a fix called Woods. I believe there might even be one more fix that lies, maybe even two or three more fixes, but it does terminate. Well, it terminates at Miami Center's airspace. As you see, that arrow is pointing to Miami Sector 63, the Serta sector. It actually goes to a fix called Lucky, and Lucky lies on the boundary between Miami and New York flight information regions or Miami Center and New York Center. So a very popular boundary fix for them is Lucky, and it's good for us to know where some of these airways terminate just outside of our airspace. So Sorrel, let me get the pointer out. Sorrel, Hillary, 113 miles, Liu, L-E-E-O-O, -O, 69 miles to Go Te, Gulf Oscar Tango Alpha Yankee, 72 miles to Panmo, Papa Alpha, November, Mike Oscar, 130 miles to Dong Ku, and I said that kind of fast, 139 miles, and then onwards to Kendall. Awesome, Lima 454. We find ourselves back in the Scapa area for Lima 455. So just fixate your eyes there. It does not extend south into Curacao's flight information region, a very useful airway. Scapa goes to Cabeza, so Cabeza being a junction point, a point of intersection for Lima 337 and Lima 455, great for traffic search, for traffic that could be converging, 22 miles between those two points. Vachi, and 143 miles lies between them. Vachi is spelled Victor Alpha Charlie India. Sorry, Victor Alpha Charlie Hotel India. And from Vachi to Janma, and 117 miles lie between there. Juliet Alpha, November Mike Echo. Christian, Juliet Alpha, November Mike Alpha is Janma. And between Janma, the new point is called Lent, moving northbound. Lent is the namesake of a traffic bay in Sector 4. So you have San Juan Sector 4, as denoted by the boundary lines here, and there are multiple traffic bays, but Lent is the first one. So it actually is a posted fix, which is exciting. There's 44 miles that lie between Janma and Lent, a short distance 22 miles later to a fix called Kinch. And then from Kinch goes to a point called Maycor. Lima 455, just like Lima 454, extends all the way through New York Center oceanic sectors. And actually, just like Lima 454, which I failed to mention, it actually terminates at the Kennedy VOR at JFK. So this is as direct as you can possibly get going through oceanic airspace to get to the New York terminal area or as direct as you can if you are bound to Kennedy. As we mentioned, does not extend southbound into Curacao South Center's airspace. So you have Maycor to Kinch, 22 miles to Lent, Lima Echo, November, November Tango, 44 miles to Janma, Juliet Alpha, November Mike Alpha, 117 miles to Vachi, Victor Alpha, Charlie Hotel India, 143 miles to Cabeza, still written in blue from our reference of Lima 337, 22 miles to Scapa, which is still written in purple violet from Lima 325. Lima 455, great job with that. Lima 456, another wonderful airway, not used so much here south in San Juan Center Sector 8, even though it does begin there, but it is pretty useful when you start getting closer to the New York Center Oceanic and San Juan center boundary. And it too, just like Lima 454 before it and Lima 455 preceding it, it does in fact terminate at the Kennedy VOR. So a very useful airway to facilitate traffic from this part of the world, not only the Caribbean, but South America to the United States East Coast and all terminals in the New York terminal area.
It begins in a fix called Kiker, Kilo, India, Kilo at Garomio, or Kiker, however you want to call it. It goes to ET, which we are familiar, and as we kind of put in this camouflage green olive drab for you from that purple that it was previously hued. 89 miles lie between those two fixes, between Kiker and ET. From ET, goes to a fix called FRAT. From FRAT to ET is 172 miles, written in green right here. It may look a little bit convoluted. From FRAT goes to a fix called THANK. THANK is the namesake of another traffic bay in Sector 4. So we are well aware of the Lent. You'll have a Lent Bay and you'll have a THANK Bay. And as you see here, there is a common intersecting point here. There will be a few, maybe one more airway that goes through Lent. Actually, there will be two more. And then THANK is going to be made up of a few airways as well. Not only Lima's, but when we get to the mics in a separate video. Between those two fixes, FRAT and THANK is 122 miles. And a short distance from THANK to the boundary, the boundary fix being named Hansi, Hotel Alpha November Charlie Yankee, or Nancy with an H. There's 35 miles that lie between them. And it goes up to a visible point north of our airspace inside of New York to a fix called Parcha. So, Parcha, Hansi, 35 miles to Thank, Thank being spelled as you would think it would, Tango Hotel Alpha November Kilo, 122 miles to Frat, Foxtrot Romeo Alpha Double Tango, 172 miles to ET, 89 miles to Kiker, Kilo India Kilo Eka Romeo. Nemo 456 does not extend south into Micah Tia's airspace. It does meet up with other airways, and we will make reference to those in a different video when we cover those respective airways. And like we said, it does extend well into New York Center's airspace all the way to the Kennedy VOR. So Lima 456, guys, very useful, very helpful. Lima 458, very interesting airway as well. Commonly used just like Lima 456, more so by Sector 4 as a way to transit the San Juan Center airspace and make their way towards terminals in the New York area, Philadelphia, Newark, and New York in detail. Focus on Armour because that's where we will be starting from. Armour still written in blue from our Lima 337 reference. And this kind of kiwi... Uh, kind of lime electric green, if you will, or more. 218 miles to Panmo, very simple there, not uh, overly complicated, with 218 miles to a common point that we just identified, Panmo. And then from Panmo, even easier still to thank, which we just covered in Lima 456, with 138 miles lying between them. And then from thank, it's going to go to a fix called Cheddar. This is our second cheese referenced fix. The first one was Gouda on the boundary between Princess Julian Approach Control and San Juan in Sector 2. So Cheddar, Charlie Hotel Echo Delta Romeo, Cheddar. And there is 35 miles that lie between Thank and Cheddar. And from Cheddar, it goes northbound to a fix called Taosu, which is not depicted. So. Just remember, this electric kind of kiwi green, or more, 218 miles to Panmo, 138 miles to Thank, 35 miles to Cheddar. So not too complicated. You only have one, two, three, four fixes to think of. And even though this map is starting to get very busy with the crisscrossing of all these Lima Airways, just remember, our more 218 miles to Panmo, 138 miles to Thank, 35 miles later you find yourself at Cheddar and the Gee Whiz information lying outside of San Juan Center's airspace to Taosu. And there you have it, Lima 458. Like I said, pretty much used more so by Sector 4. Aircraft will converge on Cheddar via a combination of routes or via random routes, and you won't be seeing too much traffic actually flying the Lima 458 segment between Armour and Panmo. All right, let's keep it going. It's starting to look like a piece of art. Lima 459, 
just like Lima 454, 55, and 56, transcends San Juan Center's airspace and terminates at the Kennedy VOR. You'll find a lot of traffic or using this airway that have departed points in South America and the Caribbean. So it's very interesting and a very uh, trafficked route, if you will. So fixate your eyes on Anata. That's where we're going to start. It does not extend south into Piarco Center's airspace. It begins at Anata. So if you're looking at Anata, still written in that magenta, in this kind of very much navy-like color, to the fix called Liu, still written in gold from Lima 454. There is 155 miles between Anada and Liu. As you see there, the RNAV waypoint is still rather brilliant and visible there. And Liu, the L is covered up by the drawing of the airspace boundary of San Juan Approach. But Lima, Echo, Echo, Oscar, Oscar. We are familiar with Anada from the Lima 452 reference. So 155 miles between Anada and Liu via direct. From Liu, it's going to go to a new point that we have not named yet. And it is appropriately named Cafe, like coffee. Charlie, Alpha, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Echo. So just remember two Fs for this cafe, just like two E's in Rafi, three E's in ET. We are heavy on the syllables here. So cafe, and as you see, this point is rather uh, easily identifiable. Well, once it's named, you know, now that you have a name to it, it kind of makes sense that it is in fact what it is. And then you have 151 miles that lie between Liu and cafe. And between cafe, you're gonna have an intermittent stop before you reach the boundary at a fix called Oduka. Oscar Delta Uniform Charlie Alpha, the first time we're hearing this fix. We'll deal with it one more time in the upcoming airway. Between those two points is 62 miles. And then, as you see, and you can probably guess, with Kika being present there and nowhere else really to go for this airway unless we were naming a new boundary point, it goes to Kika. Lima 459 does in fact go to Kika. 61 miles to Kika, then from Kika, it extends. As we said, it will go all the way to the Kennedy VOR if you allow it to be, but the next stop on the airway is a fix called Nubis, which could not be depicted. So, going in reverse order, Nubis to Kika, still written in that light pink from when we talked about Lima 329. 61 miles to Aduka, which you'll see is the fixed posting. You'll see any traffic on Lima 459, you will get an Aduka ticket or an Aduka flight progress trip. Cafe, 62 miles between those two fixes. 151 miles, you run into Liu, still written in gold from Lima 454, but clearly this RNAV waypoint just southeast of St. Croix, the ORDME. 155 miles to Anada, which we just talked about, or kind of just talked about when we covered Lima 452. So Anada, 155 miles Liu, 151 the Cafe, 62 to Aduka, 61 to Kika, then onwards to Nubis to have Lima 459 drawn on this map. So far, so good. Keep it going. We are almost done. These extensive airways, you deserve a break and a very simple airway. So let's get to what I thought, or what I still think, is the simplest airway that we have in our fair airspace. It is the first airway that I ever learned. It might even be the first airway that you learn, uh, memorization-wise, here at San Juan. Lima 460. It starts within the confines of our sector, of our center, and it ends. It does not go anywhere else. So Lima 460. If you're looking at the St. Thomas VOR, I just titled it in that off mustard color there. It's in bold, whether you can tell or not, but you can definitely see that the VOR DME is colored in. St. Thomas to Oduka, 165 miles, as simple as that. No need to overcomplicate it, don't overthink it, don't think twice, it's all right. 
165 miles between St. Thomas VOR Demi and Oduka, and that is Lima 460. So very simple. St. Thomas, Aduca, 165 miles. Aduca, St. Thomas, 165 miles. Simplest one. Can't get more simple than that. All right, so Lima 461 is our next one, or our next airway here, and you will be using this airway quite a bit. For Julian departures, going north into New York Center's airspace, it is a straight shot, and you'll see that Lima 461 actually starts here at St. Martin, and it's gonna to go to Oak Hall. And there's just a few fixes in between. One that makes sense is one we already identified, a straight green line there for contrast to Trinky, still written in charcoal from the Lima 335 reference. From Trinky, obviously a boundary fix that exists at Princess Juliana Approach Control in San Juan to a fix called Yayo. Yayo being the first name of a multi-name traffic bay, the Yayu Nadu Bay. So this is where the Yayu Nadu Bay in Sector 4 gets its name from, at least in part, from Yayo. Between Yayo and Trinki, there is 142 miles. And as you guessed, judging by this trace, unless it's gonna do anything extremely weird, and we know that airplanes do not like to make weird kinks and dog legs, so they love flying in straight paths. So it's gonna to go to Opal, as you probably could have imagined. 67 miles exist between Yayo and Opal. And from Opal, it does extend into New York Center's airspace. Actually goes all the way to a fix called Merig for information, which is pretty darn close to the New York terminal area. But for our intents and purposes, it goes to a fix which is depicted just barely from the map cutoff to a fix called Cunepa, Quebec November Echo Pop Alpha. And it continues on, like I said, all the way to a fix called Merg. Even gets really close to Bermuda, if you are so geographically inclined. So Cunepa, southbound to Opal, 67 miles to Yayo. Yayo is spelled Yankee India, Yankee Yankee Oscar. As we said, it makes up the Yayu Nadu Bay, the first part of it. 142 miles to Trinky, and then 23 humble miles to Juliana. This airway is bi-directional, so you'll deal with departures and arrivals, and most of the traffic that is using this airway is in fact going or coming from St. Martin's uh, terminal area. So there it is, Lima 461. In typical fashion, we will move onwards to next in sequential order, Lima 462. As you have noticed, the trend of most of these Lima airways go north-south, and they provide almost a grid work of a way to transport yourself through the San Juan FIR into Waters airspace. Waters being the project of redesigning the New York Oceanic airspace to facilitate traffic more efficiently to high traveled, high density terminal areas. Look to the far east of our boundary. This is where Lima 452 is going to be. If you remember, we talked about the bird VOR when we talked about the ATS routes. Very interesting at that as a junction point and a point of convergence for a couple airways. And Lima 462 is no different. Lima 462, as you know, or may not know, or could guess, it does extend well past the San Juan FIR boundary, it goes to a point called Cape. It's pretty close to a point called, or gets pretty close to Bermuda, if you will. So it is a heavily trafficked route, but also Lima 462 does go south and it does extend well into Piarco Center's airspace. So let's get drawing. Bird VOR written there in that mustard kind of off gold color. 53 miles exist to a fix called Lampkin, Lima Alpha Mike Kilo November, Lampkin. Lampkin, you'll be giving Lampkin estimates to VC Bird Approach for uh, Antigua Landers and also to Piarco for uh, traffic overflying going to South America from the US East Coast. Very interesting stuff there. Another new fix called Nadu, which we alluded to before, November Echo Yankee Delta Uniform. 
It is the second part of the Yayu Nadu Bay. It may not be abundantly clear why the uh, bay in Sector 4 is named for these two fixes, or these two fixes make up its name, but you'll see when we cover the Mike Airways in a separate video, how many of the Mike Airways go northeast and southwest, and they serve as a great way to look at traffic that could be converging at same altitudes because they are on the same cardinal direction. So it's a great way for traffic search to be realized using these two fixes. And since they, since these two airways cut across, and there will be a few airways that cut across going southwest, you'll see how it serves that the namesake is both for Yayo here and Nadu here as points of intersection. So Sector 4 is made up of three strip posting bays, Lent, Thank, and Yayo Nadu with a slant there. So as that little tagline, that little tangent is done, we have 59 miles to Nadu between Nadu and Lampkin. Between Nadu, we go north to a new boundary fix that we have not covered yet called Daywin, Delta Alpha Whiskey India November. And there are 95 miles between those two fixes. So think of it this way, between Daywin and Nadu is 95 miles, and between Nadu and Lampkin is 59 miles. So the inverse of these numbers. And then from Daywin, it extends to a fix we can see to a fix called Zabor. And Zabor, like I said, Lima 462 goes well north, almost touches the Bermuda area, and goes all the way to the east coast to a fix called Kate. Some G Wiz information for you. So Zabor, Daywin, nine or five miles to Nadu, 59 miles, Lampkin, 53 to Bird, and it terminates. That's Lima 452. In this video, we made reference how Lima 349, as denoted in this kind of magenta color, is the replacement for Green 633. It's very direct. It doesn't have a kinks and turns and following the line of sight of navigational aids. It's straight and to the point, facilitates traffic bi-directionally, east-west, west-east, and now we have another avenue to help in that effort. Lima 577, you want to think of it as the blue 520 replacement or a more efficient blue 520. If you watched our ATS Navig colored airway routes, you'll see that blue 520, just like green 633, stops at a lot of points along its way as it traverses the San Juan FIR. So just like blue 520, we're going to look around here towards Elopo. And there it is in this dark brown Elopo. Elopo it goes to St. Martin, kind of similar to Blue 520 in that respect with 40 miles. But here's where the advantage is realized from St. Martin all the way to St. Thomas. How awesome is that? A nice direct route segment of 111 miles. Between St. Thomas, it's not stopping anywhere else. It's going to go right through Sector 8, 170 miles later to a fix called Antex, which just like Blue 520, it mirrors it, but goes certainly more direct, stops at a lot less fixes. 170 is what is being made reference here. I know the line kind of blends in. It is brown, does not go through Barincon, just almost threads the needle between Barincon and Mayaguez. 170 miles to Antex. And then just inside, of Santa Domingo's airspace, if you were to fly Lima 577, it goes to Punta Calcedo or Las Americas, where the Las Americas airport is. A lot of traffic that occurs between uh, Las Americas and San Juan, vice versa. So you have Calcedo, Antex, 170 miles to the St. Thomas VOR DME, 111 miles to the St. Martin VOR DME, 40 miles to Zapata. Unlike Blue 520, Lima 577 does not extend into Bird, at least not yet at the time of this video's publication. So Elopo, 40 miles, St. Martin, 111 miles to St. Thomas, 170 miles to Antex, and then from Antex, it goes to Calcedo, and it doesn't stop there. It's a very useful airway. It does, in fact, go all the way to Central America. I'm pretty sure it stops at um, an intersection that I don't really know right now, but I'm pretty sure it is near Belize. So it's very interesting, very useful airway, and like I said, uh, almost perfect replacement and a suitable substitute for Blue 520. Very good.
right. So we kind of went a little out of order here with Lima 577, take care of some more low hanging fruit here with other airways. Look here, Lima 467. Yes, we are a little out of order bouncing around. Fixate your eyes on a NADA because this is a fix that we are going to um, see become populated with another airway. This particular airway does not extend southeast into Piarca Center's airspace, and it does not even make its way outside of San Juan's airspace to the northwest. So it is an internal airway to facilitate traffic. It will make a lot more sense when we cover the Yankee and Metroplex routes in a different video. But for right now, let's draw it from Anata. This bright sky blue to a fix called Anner. This will serve as a great transition point for traffic landing the San Juan terminal area from South America and Piarco. 87 miles lie between Anada and Anner. And in Anner, it goes to Gesso with 89 miles, and that is where it terminates. Now, you might be asking, what is the utility of this airway? Well, in good time, you will learn that there are multiple Yankee Metroplex routings, routes that converge on Gesso. And then from Gesso, they can join those routes and start their way through the Metroplex, the South Florida Metroplex project through San Juan Center Sector 6. So it will become abundantly clear why it is useful to have an airway segment of that short duration. Unlike Lima 460, you will be seeing uh, this short airway segment being found quite a bit for aircraft joining up with those Metroplex routes. So Lima 467 is no exception. From Gesso, 89 miles to Anner, then 87 miles to Anata, realizing that Lima 467 does not extend past Gesso in name, even though it does facilitate traffic joining up with different airways to be covered later. And it does not extend southeast bound into Piarco Center's airspace. So Lima 467, Anata, 87 miles Anner, 89 miles Gesso. Gesso is still written in magenta from our Lima 349 reference. And you see here it's a very faint triangle, but a triangle nonetheless that you'll see on your blank map. Wonderful job, wonderful. Lima 466, like I said, in true fashion, we kind of just keep you guessing with all of the khaki wombus order that we are operating on. So fixate your eyes to this nice little elbow here. And you see how we've discovered Hillary. Last video, Amber 555, this video on Lima 454, we have just discussed all these airways that emit from Inada. But this area is kind of bare, and with the amount of traffic that goes over both Hillary and Nada, a few years ago, they put in a fix here, and then almost a couple months after the fix got identified, an airway or airways started to emit from this point. So without keeping you on your toes any longer, it's a fix called GC, written in yellow right there, and you can even see the faint outline of the RNAV waypoint there on this little elbow here of the San Juan FIR. From GC, very simple. It goes uninterrupted, northwest, all the way to a fix which it looks like is the Barinkin VOR, but is in fact a fix called Miguel. Miguel written here in yellow, an arrow pointing you towards this faint RNAV waypoint, practically sharing the same pixels as the vortex of Barinkin, but it is in fact located just a little southwest of the Barinkin or vortex, and it is an active RNAV, rem or RNAV fix. So Miguel, GC, and I think we have the distance here for you. 307 miles. So it's a direct route, kind of like Lima 460, very simple. GC does not go into Piarco Center's airspace. Lima 466, 370 miles to Miguel. Miguel pointed out there. Miguel GC, 370, 307 miles between them. And as you can imagine, just like with Lima 467 and Gesso, Lima 466 terminates at Miguel and it gets picked up by Metroplex routings for traffic going through the Southwest Florida Metroplex project. Miguel, that, I'm sorry, Miguel, 307 miles to Gis is Lima 466.
And last but certainly not least on our voyage of the Lima Airways, you see this wonderful assortment of colorful airways, of colorful spaghetti crisscrossed and strewn about. Let's fixate our eyes on GC one more time in a very dark and somber color of almost black, practically darkened charcoal. An arrow extends because this airway does go rather far all the way down through South America. It does terminate in Brazil, which is pretty impressive. But the fix you might want to be aware of is VIBZ, which exists inside Piarco Center's airspace. It's rather far southeast. It goes to GC. And then one wonderful straight direct segment to a fix called FERNA. You become more familiar with FERNA, with San Juan departures on the GLADA 3 departure procedure or the GLADA 3 SID. But for now, FERNA, and you can see 458 miles extends direct. No other fixes lie within or on this airway. It actually kind of shows you the grand scale of how large the San Juan FIR is when you fly it diagonally. It's probably the furthest point, 458 miles uninterrupted. The airway does extend past Verna to Maycor, where it joins up with Lima 455, which is very useful for South American traffic trying to get to the United States East Coast to fix his north of the DC area as far north as Toronto. Very simple airway to VIBZ off of GC, still written in the yellow beaming color from our Lima 466 reference. In black, 458 miles there is the denotation just south of Brad, 458 miles to Ferna, and that's it. And then from Ferna, it goes to Maycor. And that my friends, is all the Lima Airways, at least at the time of publication of this video. So great job with that. My goodness, that was fun, wasn't it? Ugh, geez, oh man. Well, we saved the hardest map for seconds. So we kind of warmed you up with kind of a good exercise with the colored airways. Most of those are being phased out. There used to be a lot more of them. So a nice little warm up. The map wasn't as convoluted, right? It kind of centraled along the island chains. This video was the first video where we kind of said, hey, we are just going completely north and south, east and west, southeast and northwest with long airways drawn out, not being connected so much by nav aids, but here being connected by RNAV waypoints and performance-based navigational routings where minimum separation is allowed to be used. They are used for non-radar purposes because out over the ocean, New York Center doesn't have radar. So these airways are very, very useful. They are heavily trafficked with the exception of a few of them you won't see too much. You probably won't see Lima 460 too often. Sometimes you'll see other ones more prominent than others, but for the most part, you'll be dealing with these airways on a constant basis. So, wonderful job. It takes a lot of patience with the Limas. There are just so many of them. They crisscross, even though they are kind of uniform, they're not so evenly distributed. And it, when you get towards the end of drawing, the, the map kind of looks um, like a work of art that you'd find in, in a modern art museum, right? It just, just kind of looks all kind of kinky and, and uh, whatnot. So wonderful job. I appreciate you guys spending this time with me drawing the map. I hope it was interesting. I hope the background information uh, kind of put some context to why the routes are the way they are. Obviously, a lot of previews for our next video for the Yankee routes or the Metroplex routes because uh, everything kind of comes together. We covered the ATS routes. We just covered the Limas. If you think the ATS routes are the, the vestiges of the day of the dinosaur when routes had to follow the nav age because uh, that's all that was available because as long as you had a rock and an island, you could put a nav aid there, you can put an airway. We kind of advanced beyond that. Performance-based navigational routings for the, to facilitate traffic into waters airspace into New York. So that was the first introduction of, hey, this is how we can design to facilitate traffic this way. And then along came Metroplex 
to say, hey, let's finish the job and let's try to blend some of these airways to make it all work. And you'll see that its aim uh, to do that is rather successful, but tedious nonetheless, and a, causes a trainee or development developmental new to the San Juan uh, CRAP to do a lot of drawing. So I hope you had a good time. I know I certainly did. Could not be any more appreciative of you spending your time drawing here. I know you'll do well. So just hang in there. Keep those attitudes just like your separation positive. Steve here. I will see you again at another video. Take care now.